Okay. All right, I'm recording. Okay, well, I want to um, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, uh, Wednesday, May 23rd. This is our last and, and final meeting uh, for the year. And um, I do have some things I want to kind of just update you guys on and remind you guys about uh, to, to wrap up the year. And then we'll kind of just open it up for anything, you, any questions you guys may have. And, and if you want to comment on how, how your year went, we can do that at the end as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we have a lot of new courses uh, planning to roll out with these courses in the fall. This all is depending upon um, state approval, of course. So introduction to business. Uh, Andrea Johnson, she's a new teacher. She teaches in West Central, I believe. Um, and she is developing that course for us, and that will be on Blackboard. Uh, Native American Studies. We used to teach this back in the day through DDN, and I think this course would be a good course um, to have for our, all of our OLC students. Um, Heather Collins, that should be Collins, no G there, I spelled her name wrong. But anyway, she is going to develop that course for us. She teaches out in Laura Brule, um, and I think she teaches this course there um, too. So she is developing that course for us. Um, interior Design, Charlotte Moling. Um, has this course pretty much ready to go. She um, piloted this course with her Westington Springs students this year and felt that it went uh, very well. So she is going to put it all on Blackboard and, and have an online version of this course. I think I'm kind of excited for this one just because I think, uh, you know, I think there would be some interest. So I'm excited to see how many students we get signed up for that. Um, and then visual communications, Tina Novotny um, is going to, she's got that course developed and ready to go. We're just in the process of evaluating it. Um, this visual communications course is um, uh, it's kind of a 3D modeling course. So it's like a, a kids will download a software, um, software program on their computer. And then it's called Sketch, SketchUp Pro, I believe. And it's a free software um, that the state allows uh, South Dakota uh, schools to use. So it's no cost to us. Um, students will just have to download that on their computer and be able to work. Um, so she said she's doing this course with, their, with her students in Cologne, and they really, really are enjoying this course. So she wanted to create an online version. Um, multimedia Design, Marta Olson, is developing this course for us. Um, so we appreciate that. So hopefully we'll get that up and going in the fall as well. And then ASL 2, American Sign Language 2. Uh, we do have American Sign Language 1. And that's been a very, very popular course for us. Um, we only have one teacher teaching it, so she has limited that course to only 20 students. And we are already full for the fall for this course, for American Sign Language 1. We're already full. Um, so basically we have students on the waiting list too. So anyway, so we're hoping, um, so she's going to get ASL 2, um, so there's um, the two foreign language courses there. And that's all of our new courses that we have. So we do have quite a bit this, this, uh, this coming fall. So we just, this summer we'll be busy trying to find, find evaluators. If you guys know anybody that can evaluate um, these courses, I would appreciate any names you have. Um, what do you need for that? Like, what kind of people? Teachers? So, yes. Yeah, so, so basically, in order for someone to evaluate the course, they cannot be part of our staff, and they have to be qualified to teach the course. So they have to be certified to teach it. So okay. that. So it's it's tough for me because I, you know, we only know a few select names from some certain districts. Um, but if you know some other people, I doesn't, you know, and they probably do have to be a South Dakota teacher. Okay. Um, Probably have to be qual you know, certified in South Dakota, I'm assuming. I believe so. Um, but yeah, I do have, um, let's see. ASL2 I have covered. Visual communications I have covered. And multimedia design I have covered. So I need one for introduction to business, Native American studies, and interior design. Are the three that I'm looking for evaluators for. So any names at all, that would be great. You can just email those to me. Okay. You guys have any questions on those? Okay. We'll go ahead and move on. Um, 2B, 
Pam and I looked over our calendar for next school year, and we just, um, you know, we just selected the dates that um, corresponded with the dates we picked for uh, this year. Um, so first semester, um, we will start on August 22nd, that's a Wednesday, and we'll go to December 19th, which is a Wednesday. Does that sound good to you guys? Or do we want to move? Yeah. Do we want to move the December 19th to the 20th or 21st, which is a Thursday or Friday, instead of a Wednesday? What do you guys think about that? I, I personally like the cushion of the two days at the end, because then if a student has to, is late, and that happened to me this year, we still have a little bit of a cushion for getting the assignments in. Whereas if you extend it to the 21st, then you're into the weekend and Christmas if they don't. Yeah. And that's my, that's just my opinion. But thank you also for starting on a Wednesday okay. because that's so much easier to get kids made up when it's just a three day before, because a lot of schools will start on like the next week. And so if you just have three days to get made up, that's really a lot easier than the week. And okay. again, this so is my opinion. So you're saying mm -hmm. do you need to, to keep it on the 19th for the end of the first semester? Well, I think so, because practically speaking, we could still accept work up to the 21st. Right, right. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I like, I like Jean's rationale for that. I do, too. Okay. Marta, you good with that? Totally good with that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, and then second semester, we'll start, okay, on January 2nd which this is a Wednesday. So most schools will have that Monday and some will have that Tuesday off. So we figured maybe start on that Wednesday. What do you guys think about that? That start date, does that sound okay? I'm sorry, Casey, what were the days of the week there? Okay, so January 2nd falls on a Wednesday. So yeah. The Monday and Tuesday before that, I would think schools want to be in session. Yeah. I think that's a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll start on January 2nd and then end on May 17th, which is, which is a Friday. This year we ended on May 18th. So it would be May 17th next year. That, you guys okay with ending on a Friday? Or do you want to push it to win, back to Wednesday? Do you, I, I mean, you're going to have... Some students needing more time anyway, but that's up to you guys. You guys tell me. Well, I think the end of the year is a little easier because I think there's still going to be some schools in session after the 17th. Right, um, right. I yeah. Think, yeah, I, you know, that I don't think is as, I don't think that's as important as the December date, but. Okay, well, so what, do you, what do you guys I think agree. about, do you like, okay, ending that 17th or do you, what do you think about ending like the next week or is that too late ending like you know the 22nd that, that following wednesday or is that too late i like the 17th because then you you do have the cushion for next week okay that sounds good all right we'll leave it there then okay we'll just leave it leave it how we have it up there then yep. right. i will send this calendar out to you guys when i send the recording for this so you have it Okay. Um, two I have to attend to children. I'll be back. Just keep okay. going. <laughs> no problem, Kate. Um, two C. Um, we've kind of went over this already, but I just wanted to uh, kind of just throw it out there just to remind you all about our website. And we do have an online application. So if students are, or it's not students, but teachers or adults are interested in teaching for us, they can go to our website and fill out the, the application. Um, but this is what our website looks like. It's dialsd.net. So it's uh, all of our information, courses, uh, the courses we offer. We will obviously update this as we, you know, start this next school year. Um, calendars and policy. So we'll update the calendar in here as well. And then here is where they can fill out, oh, no, not there, employment is where they can fill out an online application down here in the corner if they are interested. So if you have anybody that's talking about it, you can just refer them to here 
Um, and you can also give them my name and email address to in number and they can always contact me if they if they want to but um, you can just direct them here and fill it out and they can send it my way. Okay, pull back up the agenda. Um, 2D, uh, the CTE Teacher Workday. Every summer, um, we try to get together one day in June to um, work on updating our curriculum for our Blackboard courses. And also we spend a little bit of time in the morning just talking about a few other things um, that I want you guys to know and um, just uh, other things, what maybe that went on throughout the school year and things that we can kind of improve on. Um, but this year, um, the board did approve that uh, to give the teachers a $100 stipend for coming and attending that day and updating their curriculum. Um, this year, the Department of Ed, um, they have did a lot of um, revising as far as standards go for a lot of the CTE courses and have updated those. So we would like you guys to be able to, you know, I know it's a lot of work, so we want to, you know, compensate you guys for that. So they did agree to give you this $100 stipend to come um, um, for that day, to, for the CTE teacher work day. And, um, and basically that day is going to be for you guys to update your curriculum. Most of the day is going to be on that. We're going to just kind of talk about a few things in the morning, but then you'll have that day to, to work on all of your, all of your stuff. Um, you guys have any questions on that? We did, we did figure out a date, June 19th, which is a Tuesday, and that will be at the Mitchell Middle School. And we've always been um, hosting it at the middle, Mitchell Middle School, and they are very... Um, they, they work with us very well and are very welcoming there. So we will have a room reserved there. So if that works for you, great. Um, any questions on that? What time, what time are we starting? That's a good thing. I should have put that on there. Um, I think we, what we've done in the past is we went from nine to three, nine o'clock in the morning to three. And you were usually out of there before three. I believe the last couple of years we haven't went the whole the whole time, but and we will provide lunch. So dial dial will provide lunch for you guys. So Karen and I will will talk about that, what we want to do for that. But okay. Um, Casey, the only question I have is like for instance, my human development classes. I believe I have all the standards in place because remember we talked about that, and I kind of wrote the last one, knowing that the new standards were coming in. Yeah. But when does, when does Karen want like the numbers? The numbers should have stayed the same, but the names of the courses are different. Would Karen like those right now? Okay. Or wait you till... know what? I think we did a lot of that updating. Okay. Um, so then like you're saying like the adolescence to death, is that the one that changed? Yeah. The that has to be changed from adolescence to adulthood to that upbeat fray or that upbeat title of adolescence to death. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we already kind of, we already went in and did okay. those changes. Is there okay. other one of the ones of your courses that changed? No, the rest of them should have stayed the same. Okay. So we will update that on the South Dakota, South Dakota virtual school website. So we'll update that on there as well as like our website and any other like brochures we have and stuff. Okay. Um, you, and if I and if I need to change any banners, uh, you know, inside of the Blackboard courses, I can do that 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 day while we're working. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, because I know there's at least like there's a good four or five, maybe six name changes that happen this year. So with with those courses, so yeah, well, Sarah can work on those that day. That'd be great. And then um. As we're kind of talking about that, I do have that down here, E and F. Um, as you're working on updating your courses, if you have any new materials that you, you want to order, um, let Karen and I know by June 29th. If we can get, you know, in, uh, all the materials, if we know what we need to get and then we can order them, we can get them here before the, the start of the, the school year next year. Um, as well as the course descriptions and your syllabus. So if you have our updating, you wanna look at your syllabus, if there's any changes, send that to us, because we do put those sil the syllabi on our website. Um, and then the course descriptions. If you guys um, 
could go on the South Dakota Virtual School website and just look at your course description. And if you feel like you want to update that, just write it out, write what you want, write the changes, write how you want it um, written up, and then send it to us. And then we will we'll get that changed in, the, um, in SDDS. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So that covered E and F. Um, okay, num uh, letter G. This is kind of a big one. We, um, we're talking a lot this year about um, your guys' pay, what, what you guys get paid per student per course. And there was a lot, there was a lot of conversation about that, that middle piece where you guys didn't get paid from, if you had 10 to 20 students, you didn't get any, any payment. And so we kind of were doing a lot, of, a lot of talking to see how we can change that and try to get you guys compensated for those students. So we went through a lot of different scenarios. Um, Trina, Val, even Karen and I, we all in the office kind of were punching a lot of numbers and calculate, calculating um, to kind of figure out a, a good way to make sure everybody gets some sort of raise. We didn't want it to be just some people. We wanted it to be everybody. Um, whether you have one student or whether you have 30 students, we wanted to make it fair for everybody. So we came up with um, one to 12 students. So if you have one to 12 students, you will get 255 per student. So instead of the 250 that you originally get, that you got this year, you'll get 255. So we upped it by $5. Um, and then the 13 to 22 students, you get an extra $100 per student. So that's that middle range where you're gonna get you're gonna get compensated for those kids. And then 23 and up, you'll get an extra 255 per student. Not a lot of courses get that many, which is the 23 and up, but some do, so we have to, we have to put that in there. But that is what it's gonna be for, for next year. That's gonna start in the fall, so you'll get, you'll get that. Um, we did go through everybody's contract, what they currently get paid, um, and made sure that everybody was gonna get some sort of raise. So that's what it's going to be. You guys have any questions on that? No question, but I would just like to say thank you very much because uh, that really, I mean, that, I think that really makes a difference and that's really a good, I guess you could say a good incentive for us to, as we teach more and more kids and maybe numbers will continue to climb. So I think that makes it really attractive for an online teachers. So thank you very much. Yes, you're very welcome, Jean. Yeah, we, we want to appreciate you guys and, and reward you on, on all the hard work that you do, you know, for our districts and for the students. So I hope, I hope this works out for everyone. So we'll see how it goes next year, but it should be, it should be good. Okay, um, 2H, I did send this out um, through, I don't know, a few times um, in the last couple of months, but this is just transform your classroom. Um, so Lindsay Brewer and Laura Keeler, they're um, Edgenuity teachers that teach for Dial Virtual School. They teach out in Huron. Um, and this is a book study that they're doing um, where you can get um, credit um, if you participate in this. And, but this is more for it, uh, if you're working in a classroom. It's not really online, um, like teaching to online students. It's more teaching to classroom students. So um, if you want... Uh, any more information about this or, you know, um, you can email me or email Lindsay or Lori. They have K-12 email addresses and ask them questions about it. But I know you can get credit for it. Um, I know I do have a brochure that they did send me that I can maybe put in my, um, when I send out the link for the meeting, I can put this in there too. And you guys can kind of just look it over yourself and just see if it's anything that you're interested in. But they wanted me to send this out to our teachers as well as other listservs that I'm on. So, but I'll send this out with um, the meeting link. Okay. Um, summer courses. We do offer summer courses. They are going to run from um, June 4th to July 31st. They're usually eight weeks long. Um, we, we do just have a select um, number of them. We do send it out to all you guys to see if you guys want to offer your courses in the summer. Some of you said yes, and some of, uh, some of you didn't want to, and that's totally fine. Um, but they will be uh, uh, starting here shortly. Karen will be sending you guys um, the information that you need as far as who's, who's in the course, how many students you have, um, 
and that information. I know we've been getting quite a few uh, this week for summer as well as next year too. So she will be in touch with you guys on that. You guys have any questions about the summer courses? I know Kate, you're doing some, right? You're doing, okay? Yes, I think I have three students. Okay. Yeah, and those numbers might change because I know we, like I said, we've been busy with registrations this week, so. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, 2J, in grade, is no longer gonna be available. Do any of you guys here, no, I don't think you do, use in grade that are on? I don't think you do. Okay, I know there's, there is um, a, a, good sl uh, a good selection of, of our teachers that do use in grade, but um, they are no longer gonna be available. Basically, another company bought them out, and so then now they're called something else and um, are no longer letting us just buy the grade book portion of, of InGrade. So we need to kind of look into some other options. I know, um, I think it was Tracy Moody said that uh, she found um, a site called Learn Boost that's pretty much the same thing, where she can just use their grade book and, and put the students' grades in there and, and then um, facilitators can log on and look at the grades. But we will have to look more into this and get some more information as far as some different options. Do you guys know any other um, sites like InGrade that we could look into? Because I, I guess I don't know any other that that would be. Because no, it's too bad. I, people are just not happy with the grade book on Blackboard. Is that the issue? Yes, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't like Blackboard grade book, and a lot like Jean. I know she just does. You you just do like a spreadsheet, right? And kind of have your I do I haven't used the blackboard for years and years and years it's real I think it's not very user-friendly yeah. um, it just it just doesn't work I even though it is probably more work than like a grading program I just like the freedom of having the grade the spreadsheet and that's kind of what yeah. I'm used to doing I like the I, I did a spreadsheet mentor. this year too for um, for speech okay I like that kids you know enter turn in assignments into the correct assignment on Blackboard, and then when I grade them, it just goes right into that assignment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it works fine. Yeah, and, and you know, it's a, it's a teacher preference. I mean, some yeah. are, some aren't. Um, but I would like to have that option for, for teachers that don't like it and want to use something else, have, you know, um, have them have another option to use something mm -hmm. else. So we will yeah. look more into this, but if you guys know of anything else out there that's kind of similar to what InGrade was, um, let me know. Can we have the option of using the infinite campus that the state uses? I think so, Marta. Um, Jean, do you know anything about that? I do. It's, <clears throat> and I have had some of my school districts let me into their grade book. Here again, it's kind of an individual call. Some schools have no trouble doing that. For instance, Bridgewater Emory, I had two students from there this year. I just used the campus grading book through Bridgewater Emory. Now, granted, I was a teacher there, so they know me very well. But I also, I know Mount Vernon let me into their grade book, and there were a couple other schools that had no trouble with it. But again, you're going to find some schools do, some schools don't. So, it's so yeah, I've had the same experience. Um, some schools were, matter of fact, they preferred um, <coughs> that I enter their grades into um, campus. And that was just fine. And then other schools did not want to do that. So, did they set you up with a course? Yeah, um, Bridgewater. Actually, Bridgewater Emory is the most recent one I've that I've worked with. That um, they just set set the courses up for me right in their campus, and um, I just added every, uh, my assignments every week and. I suppose the hard part would be is um, if if you did that, you you might have to set those assignments up in multiple schools if you have students from multiple. That that would be the downside. I yeah. yeah. Um, I think all but one year, I've only had one school at a time, at any one time that that I was doing that with. I know one year I was doing it in two different ones and. And yeah, it was a little time consuming to get right. the grades into two places, but. 
And I'll be honest, that's why I went to the spreadsheet because I did that for, I think, three or four schools one year. And that took a lot of time to set up the assignments at every yeah. school's grade book. Yeah. So then I just thought, well, it's going to take me some time to do the spreadsheets, but I can copy everything off to the spreadsheet at one shot. You know, I just yeah. copy and paste. So, um, yeah. again, personal choice. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I would, I use a spreadsheet too, but I would be really nice to something that the students could log in and check their own grades and where they are and what they have done. Is that, was that a possibility with the grade book you were using? You're talking about in grade or? Yes, yes. Uh, as far as, the, I should ask Karen, as far as the students logging in, I don't, Karen, yeah. could the students log in? Yeah, okay, so Karen's yeah. yeah, the students could, could log into there. That's, that's the only thing that, I mean, that would, I would certainly be interested in. Okay, well. We'll, we'll look into something um, similar to that. Um, we'll look into this learn boost, see what that's like. Maybe, you know, we can, we can use that. I know it's free, so that's good. Um, but if we find anything else, we'll, we'll do our research and, and we'll let you guys know. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have options. Okay, Kay, um, just wanted to let you guys know that the registration year for 1819 obviously is, is open, um, but 17 and 18 will close June 1st. So, June 1st, students will no longer be able to enroll in um, courses for 17-18. Um, I just wanted to give you guys um, an update on our registration so far. Um, this is for 18-19. Um, so total number of registrations for the summer. Um, right now we only have seven, but these, these, the sum, these, course, these numbers are, are gonna increase just from this week. Um, fall, right now we have 59, plus we have seven, seven in pharmacy tech which is good. Last year in Pharmacy Tech, we only had four, I believe, three or four. So that number is increased. Um, and then for spring, we already have 28 um, students in the Blackboard courses. So numbers are, are looking, I think, pretty good um, right now. So and obviously those are going to be increasing, um, it, you know, within within um, probably this week and, you know, September, August, September, we'll get a lot more registrations then too. So and that is all I really have uh, for you guys. Um, any questions on anything or anything you guys want to make comment on? Um, maybe you want to talk about how your year went, um, how your kids were. Any questions? My year went fine. I had the most kids I ever had this year. Um, oh, I had one fail. Um, but we were on her case. I was on her case, her principal and her e-mentor. And um, the e-mentor was uh, emailing me, asking me about some total points. And so I got back into the class just on this past Sunday. And she had turned in two assignments on Saturday, which would have taken her out of failing. So we communicated, you know, she – and I've always given kids an extension. Sure. Um, but she w was in no communication with me and I had, you know, she had been getting lots of feedback from me through her e-mentor, through her principal. So I kind of said, I don't think I can accept these grades. You know, if all of the students ask, if they just email and say, is there any way I can turn in two late things? My answer is always yes. Right. But she did none of that. And so I think we did fail her. And then the school sent her family letter and they had to pay the 250 Okay. So that was a little bit of drama. I, I did leave it up to the e-mentor because I don't know families, and I just said, this is kind of how I feel, but I'll sort of leave it up to you since I don't know the student. Good, good. Yeah, and I was wondering if that's what the district agreed to. They did, and the principal agreed to that too. They went with my recommendation. So I hate to do that, but I don't know. You know, it's kind of a hard life lesson. I don't well, know. Sometimes you have to put limitations. Yeah. Students. You know, I feel like we could drag it out forever if we yeah. wanted to. But yeah. you have to take responsibility. And like you said, either um, contact you and ask or just do the work. You know, yeah. we, we need to take that responsibility. And I think if we if we keep giving them extension after extension, it you know, doesn't really teach them anything. But so I, yeah. I agree with with how you handle that. Yeah. Good. Good. How about you, Marta? Um, I had a great year. I, I like it a lot. Um, I did have one situation where um, 
two brothers shared an assignment. One brother gave it to the other brother. Yeah. And yeah. of course they're exactly, exactly the same, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I did a, I said, share the work, share the grade. So okay. it kind of punished both of them. Sure. But nobody, it, like it wasn't devastating enough to either of them. I mean, really the one boy got it. I mean, I should have given him the zero, the, the one that took it. But, you know, he, he wasn't a very good, I mean, he's one of my ones that haven't completed anything. So, oh, sure. But, and it wasn't hard enough on the brother that did the work to, I mean, I let him do stuff so that, but I didn't know, I mean, with an online class, I would be interested to hear your opinions on what you do if you, if it's very blatant cheating. What do you do with them? Well, I'm going to let Gina, Gina <laughs> know that. <laughs> I know she has experience in this. <laughs> yeah. um, I had a similar sibling issue. One of my students this year had a sibling who taught it last year. And by chance, I always keep I, I always keep the project assignments. I don't keep like study guides or, you know, those kinds of things. I just keep the project things. And by chance, I clicked on the project from last year, and lo and behold, it was the same as the student that was doing it this year. So I went back in, and I could not get very many. I think I got five or six assignments that I could pull up from last year and compare them to this year, and they were the same. So... Uh, worked with the school and I think the biggest thing and I'm glad you mentioned that too I think the biggest thing is working with the school because ultimately it is their student and so we came up with uh, she had to redo the, all the assignments that uh, she copied that I had proof of her copying and then I believe we gave her enough credit on all of them so essentially she flunked them because she only got a 50% on them so but she worked very hard, and I think it was just a case of really poor judgment on her part. And one thing I found interesting this year, I had quite a few freshmen and a few sophomores, and then, of course, the usual junior, senior. And there is a big difference in the age ability to do well in an online course. And I don't mean doing well with the work, but I mean doing well with deadlines, doing well with communication, those kinds of things. So in this case, she was a freshman, and I think it just got overwhelming for her. And she, um, she said she had been on the computer one night and accidentally saw her sister's folder from last year, and that's how she got them turned in. It worked out, you know, and she was very apologetic. I had a telephone conference with the principal, the facilitator, with the student, and with myself, and we talked about what we should do. And then I had a telephone conversation with the principal and superintendent, and then that's when we came up with the penalty. So, what do you teach, Jean? I teach human development. Okay. Yeah. So we have, you know, we have a fair amount of projects, you know, meaning like posters or you know lessons to write or you know those kinds of things. So. Um, you know, I think just work with the school. Uh, it's it's a fact of life. I am going to this summer do some changing on many of the assignments. Nothing major, but enough that I could easily see if it was a copied assignment, and then um, that might help too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think working with the school and just talk, you know, discussing it with them. How would you like me to proceed, or coming up with some sort of plan? Um, of how to handle the situation. Definitely should communicate with the school on that. And then you guys can, you know, agree on, on what, what the best right. scenario is. So, yeah. And the school is very supportive. I will add that too. I've never, and I've had this happen occasionally in the past. The school have, has always been very supportive. Um, they might make the final decision, but it's never been that they said, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Let's just drop it. It's never, ever been that. So. Okay. Good. Sarah, you want to just go quick? This is just say quickly how your year went. Um, it went very well. I thought um, I had one student in one school that ended up doing three speeches in the last week, but she did a pretty good job and got them all turned in in time. 
um, and all of my other students were colony students, and I was a little bit concerned about what kind of um, you know topics they might be allowed to do. But I was just very pleasantly surprised. It all went pretty smoothly with with them. Good. So. Good. Good. Awesome. Well, that is all I have for you guys. It is 1.45, so my next meeting is going to start here shortly in a couple minutes. So I do want to thank you for joining me today, and I will be in touch um, with you before the next school year. Um, and then as well as the CTE Teacher Workday if you guys join us there. So I will be sending out information on that as well. Um, so hope you guys have a great summer, and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Andrea, are you still there? Okay, I see Andrea. Yeah, I'm right here. Sorry, I had it on okay. mute. I got my kid. <laughs> Not a problem. I, we just got done with our Blackboard meeting, so now if you guys just hang on for a few minutes here, we'll get our Edgenuity meeting started here shortly. Okay, perfect. Okay, looks like Katie, you're on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Mary, hi, Mary. Hi, Jeff's here too. Hi, Jeff. Okay. We'll just wait one more minute here. I know um, there was quite a few people that emailed me and said that they couldn't make it just because of the different time and some are still in school. Um, so we will just wait one more minute and then we'll get started. 